turn to page number 585. Brethren, we've met to worship as we stand. Step up here, brother, if you will. We'll pray together, and uh, while, while our brother is making his way here to the uh, pulpit, we'd like to ask you to pray for the family of Mr. Paul Lindsay and, of course, Miss Dean Lindsay and, and, uh, and, and, and well, Dean Lindsay's in heaven, but Miss Dean Lindsay, all the family, the funeral today, Mr. Paul Lindsay passed away, so we would ask you to remember that family, all right? Let's pray together and ask God to bless the Lord's name, Brother Barry. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of life, health, and strength. Forgive us some more. We failed you, dear Lord. I pray you'd meet with us in this place today as you already have in the Sunday school hour. Pray you'd bless our pastor, Lord Jesus. Fill him full of the Holy Ghost of God. Let him run well. Father, there's lost sinners in this building today. We pray you'd deal with them, save them, backslidden, dear God. I want to thank you especially for work you've done in some people's lives in this church as recently, dear God. Continue to work. Have thine own way. Bless Brother Kyle as he leads the singing a special. Dear Lord, everything we're down to the glory of God. Help people to realize they're lost, dear Lord, for it's eternally too late. Exactly right. Dear Lord, I thank you for all you're going to do, have done, continually doing. Bless this church as you have found through the years. Father, be with those that are to be here that's not. Dear God, deal with them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, all right. Thank you. you. may be seated all over the building, all right? Can you give me a little bit more on the monitor? Appreciate everybody being here. We welcome you in the name of the Lord to Mountain View Baptist Church on this Beautiful Sunday morning of the month of July, and several have been out of town, but we're glad you're back, and, and others have, uh, are gone, but we're thankful that all of you are in church this morning to worship the Lord together, all right? Please listen. We'll, get, we'll go through this real quick. Tomorrow morning, the bus is leaving at 830 in the morning for all the young people that are all the teens and young people that are going to youth camp, so please be on time. That means it's leaving at 830. You need to get there about 8 or even earlier to load up, all right? So uh, pray for the youth while they're gone this week and and then uh, and then the chaperones as well. After the service tonight, we have a special gift for all the campers. We have the Willing Workers class. It's a ladies' Sunday school class here at Mountain View have, have uh, come together and, and gave extra money. And they want to give each child a small portion of gift, a gift to help with your expensive. What a blessing. And I know the parents will appreciate it. And I know you kids will appreciate it as well. So don't, don't miss church tonight and don't leave before we meet with you in the choir loft after the service tonight, especially if you're going to youth camp, all right? Then remember the uh, Sowers and Reapers, July 15th, combined visitation. This is brand new. It was just confirmed yesterday. I'd like for you to write this down. August the 12th, everybody, that's everybody in the church. August the 12th, the youth choir is scheduled to sing at Gateway Baptist Church in Bowling Spring to their back-to-school youth rally. So go ahead and write that down. August the 12th, that's a Saturday afternoon about, he's either going to go with five or six. We're not sure right now, but we'll announce that as the day approaches. But I want you to put that on your calendar about the youth rally there in Bowling Springs on August the 12th, all right? Let's have the ushers come on in. It'll be a deacon's meeting today at 5.30. Deacon's meeting at 5.30 in the pastor's study, if you can. 5.30 this afternoon, and we'll appreciate that. Several have inquired about Vacation Bible School. We didn't have Vacation Bible School this year. We, 
we, we're going to alternate it since we're having a jubilee every year. But here is, uh, here is two vacation Bible schools. One of them is right down the road, Calvary Baptist Church, Brother Henry Coley, and all the information's here. That's right down here in Calpins. That's July 17th through the 21st. Here's the other one, July 17th through the 21st as well. That's the Brooklyn Baptist Church in Chesney. And all these churches are good people. And here's all the information. If you'd like to send your child to a vacation Bible school, there's two that are going to be very, very good, and they're very near our area. And I trust that some of you could enjoy the blessings of that VBS. All right? God bless you while the choir sings and you and the usher serve you. Go ahead, Tippy. White, step up here and pray with us if you will. We'll dedicate the offering, and this is brand new. Stuff happens, man. I'm talking about every day, and a lot of folks don't know about it, but we find out about it. And I want to pass this on to our church, and this is important. Brother Ricky Childers, a longtime member here, uh, Mr. Renee Wright's brother, and uh, Ricky's not very old at all, by the way. He had a heart attack, and he's in, well, as of yesterday or two days ago, he was in the CCU in the heart center. They're regional and maybe got out by now, probably still in the hospital, but I want to pray for Brother Ricky Childers, all right? I talked to him. They put three stents in, I believe, in his heart. So uh, let's pray for him, pray for his family, and we've got a bunch of other requests that are all in the bulletin, all right? Brother Chris, pray for us. And let's remember uh, Ricky Childers. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for letting us gather back in your house today, dear Lord. Thank you for all you many blessings. Thank you for salvation, dear Lord. I pray that you'll be with our pastor today, dear Lord, and just touch him mentally and physically. Dear Lord, I just pr uh, want to thank you for the tithes and offerings, dear Lord. Just um, use them to further your, your kingdom, dear Lord. Be with Brother Childress, dear Lord. Just touch that body, dear Lord. Touch him, dear Lord. Be with his family. Comfort him, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I just pray that you'll just watch over us as we go throughout the week, traveling on the roads, dear Lord. Be with the pastor as, uh, we, uh, as he goes to Kentucky. I pray that you'll be with the meetings that's coming up, dear Lord. Thank you for all that you've been doing for us. We love you, dear Lord. And I just pray that your, your will will be done. We ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. 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 All right. Go ahead, choir. Thank you, Brother Chris. 35. Here's the
Let's everybody take a hymn and let's turn to page number 338. First, second, last at Calvary. As the choir comes down on the second, would you stand? Our groups are going to get ready. You worship with our special singers this morning, all right? Young people, I want to encourage you now while you're at youth camp to, of course, always be on your best behavior, number one, and, and uh, realize why you're going down there. You're going for the Lord and for spiritual help and, and, and fun, too. I'm sure it's fun and good fellowship and just meeting a lot of folks. And I know it's a large, large crowd, and we'll be praying for you. We'll miss you, 
And uh, by the way, parents, everybody's welcome to drive down. We get directions from Miss Rebecca. Uh, anybody wants to drive down and be with the kids, then maybe some of the evening services, you're more than welcome to do that. We've done that before, and you can do it again this year. I know Brother Mark Stroud and Brother Moore will not mind that at all, all right? This is our first group. You worship with them while they sing, all right? Got a heart that's full of faith-filled helplessness. There are mountains ahead that I can't move by myself. But I know when I'm weak, he's strong. When I can barely breathe, there's still a song. And even though it's hard right now, I'm not here on my own. So when it seems it can't be done, I know God is big enough. I can run. You worship with them while they're Thank you, Brother Brian. Sure good to be saved this morning, ain't it? I tell you what, I'm glad I'm in God's house. I say that about every time I sing, but that's because I mean it every time I sing. 
Sure glad that Jesus loved me enough to, to come and die for me. The Bible said he became sin, uh, that we might know his righteousness. I'm sure glad God allowed me to become a saved person one day at the age of 14. And uh, we take for granted so often everything we've been raised in. And uh, just some of the terminology we use around here, just being saved. I, I'll bet you about in a common place, you could go out in our public settings. A lot of people don't even know what that word means. I, don't, I not only know what it means, but I know what it experienced. I've, I've had it come into my heart, and God's changed my life with it. And um, I, I just think about a lot of things this morning. I'm excited to be in church and real nervous this morning, filling in for a fill-in, maybe even for a fill-in for that. But I'm nervous to be in church this morning, but I'm excited to be in church this morning. And I tell you what, that makes me quiver on the inside. I know it's a big thing to come into God's house. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son for us. And um, I was thinking this morning, we're going, I'm going to sing just an old hymn here. There's nothing fancy, and it may not really do much for you, but just an old hymn. But when I went through school, when we went through, I don't know if it was sociology, geology, or geography, wherever it was, but uh, we learned about the seven wonders of the world. And they talk about these seven magnificent features, either of earth or maybe of uh, man's effect on earth, Stonehenge, and maybe great rivers, there's you know, great uh, crevices in the earth. And man, you know, mankind thinks they're really great wonders. And they listed the seven great wonders of the world. But the greatest wonder of the world ain't one of those seven. <laughs> it was a wonder that God loved an old rotten sinner like myself and gave his son to die for me on a place called Calvary. I love him this morning. Trust us to be a blessing as we try to sing it. Oh, there's a wonder of sunset at evening oh the wonder of sunrise I see oh but the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is a wonder that God loves me springtime and harvest oh the sky the stars and the sun oh but the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is this wonder that has only begun Say amen to that. Appreciate it. God bless you. What a great song. I love that song. Take your Bibles, everybody, and go to Ephesians 5 and also Leviticus chapter 1, please, today in the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 5 and then Leviticus chapter number 1. I trust and pray you'll follow with me. Pray with us and support us while we endeavor to preach, all right? We need that. We appreciate it. Ephesians 5. Leviticus chapter 1. Going to read a New Testament text. We're going to go back to the Old Testament. 
and unfold that New Testament truth is what we're going to try to do, the Lord willing. I mean, you're glad to be here today. I hope so. <laughs> Worried about a few of you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. No, I'm not kidding. No, I better just get a little water here and get revved up here. I tell you what I think happens to us. I tell you what I believe happens to us. We're so busy. And we got so much going on Monday through Saturday. And I'm afraid sometimes that we're feeding on so much other stuff. And when we come on the Lord's Day, we're already full. I don't mean bad things. I don't mean bad things. Now, that's a possibility, and I hope to God people are not doing that. But we just got so much going on, so much, so much, so much on our plate, so much, to, so much really to weigh our mind down, so much sometimes to distract us, hinder us. You got to be careful with all that. Got to try, got to try your best to come in on the Lord's Day and concentrate and focus on why we're here. That's worship, Amen, and meeting together with God's people. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. He's given himself for us, number one, as an offering. Number two, a sacrifice. And number three, for a sweet-smelling savor. Seems to me, Brother Randy, I've seen that somewhere in the Bible. I really have. Brother Kevin, I know that I've seen that somewhere in the Bible. Turn back to Leviticus chapter 1, everybody. Leviticus in the Old Testament, chapter number 1. Remarkable right here. It's remarkable that Paul gleaned from his Old Testament knowledge as a Hebrew. Leviticus chapter 1, verse number 9. But his inwards and his legs shall they wash in water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice. There's one of those words. An offering, there's the second of those words, made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. So there's the third of those words that we find in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 2. Look, if you will, in verse number 13, please. But he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water, and the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice. There it is again. An offering made by fire. There's the second one. Of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Look in verse 17. He shall cleave it with the wings thereof, but shall not divide it asunder. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Paul reached way back into the Mosaic law, the Levitical law, Brother Iverster into the offerings of the Old Testament people of Israel and grabbed that phrase, that Christ Jesus gave himself for us as an offering, as a sacrifice for a sweet savor unto God. When you look at the word offering, I want to highlight and magnify that that tells us, Brother Josh, that of his self-surrender. Nobody made him, but he laid down his life willingly. Thank God it was an offering. And then secondly, Brother Ben, I see the word sacrifice. I'm glad I can stand up here today and tell you that Christ Jesus was not only an offering, but thank God it was a sacrifice. When I look at the word offering, I see self-surrender. But when I see the word sacrifice, I see the suffering of the place called Calvary. Whether you believe it or not, and whether you appreciate it or not, and whether you can comprehend it or not, 
thank God 2,000 plus years ago, the Prince of Glory willingly laid down his life on the cross as a sacrifice. Thank God for the sacrifice. But then there's a third turn in Leviticus chapter 1 and Ephesians 5, and that is for a sweet-smelling Savior. And you know what I see there, Brother Ronnie Fells? I see the satisfaction of our God. Listen, folks, we use the word propitiation. We use the word atonement. We use the word redemption. We use the word substitute. And any word that you'd like to use today, you know what it all was? It was a sweet, smelly savor unto God. What does that imply? Brother Ben, that implies that it satisfied the heart and the mind of God. That's right, church. Calvary and the cross and Christ dying in my place and dying in your place. It was a sweet savor. It was a, it ascended up to God and not only was it a sweet savor, but it satisfied the righteous demands of God. So thank God. Let me go and get some water, all right? Thank God for Ephesians 5. And then thank God for the Pearson for Leviticus chapter number 1. In studying Leviticus chapter 1, you look at the burnt offering. Look in verse number 1, everybody. Leviticus 1 and verse number 1. And the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the congregation before the Lord. Verse 4, he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make an atonement for him. He shall kill the bullock before the Lord, and the priest Aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse 6, he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces. Verse 7, and the sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priest, Aaron's son, shall lay the parts, the head and the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar. This is why it's called a burnt offering or a burnt sacrifice. It was to burn all night on the altar. Verse 9, to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. In verse 10, he said that offering could be of the flocks. In verse 14, it could be of the fowls. And I'm not going to preach that right now, but there were three classifications, Brother David, of which those offerings could be. It could be either of the field, of the flocks, or of the fowl. And you say, what does all that mean? That simply means that according to their social standing, according to their, to their, their poverty or their, their abundance, they were to offer the beast that they could supply. What does that say? That says to us that God wants sacrifice from everybody, but he wants our best, amen? He wants our best, but that's not my message. The message is that Christ Jesus was an offering, and Christ Jesus was a sacrifice, and Christ Jesus became a sweet-smelling savor, 
and Brother McAbee, Dr. McAbee, we see all of that in the burnt offering. It matters not, Brother Ben, if the sacrifice came from the field, the cattle or the oxen. It matters not if it came from the flock. That was the sheep or the goats. And it matters not, Brother Ben, if it came from the fowls of the air. That was the turtle dice or the pigeons. All of those prefigured and all of those represented. And Miss Christy White, all of those were typical of the one sacrifice that was to be given at the end of the age. And that, by the way, that sacrifice never has to be repeated and it never shall be repeated. Thank God there was only one Calvary. Thank God there was only one redemption. Thank God there was only one atonement. And thank God there'll never be another and there never had been another. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice forever, sat down on the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high. I want to tell our Roman Catholic friends today that Calvary does not have to be repeated. I said it does not have to be repeated. It was once in the end of the world and it was an eternal redemption. I said an eternal redemption. I thank God on that cross. You know what he became? He became the offering. He became the sacrifice sacrifice and he became the sweet smelling savior look at me church he wasn't bringing the offering he wasn't bringing the sacrifice he wasn't producing the sweet smelling savior he was the offering and he was the sacrifice and his death on the cross was a sweet smelling savior amen stay with me okay stay with me I want to tell you this. I'm going to help him do my best. I really am. I'm going to give it everything I got, all right? If you'll listen, you get tuned in, okay? You know there were five offerings. You know that, right? Leviticus chapter 1 through Leviticus chapter 5, there were five offerings. I'm going to hurry up and tell you what they were. The burnt offering is in chapter 1, Brother Gary, and that is Christ, the perfect servant. The meal or the meat offering which was grain, and they baked it. That was the meal offering. Christ is the perfect son. It represents his perfect humanity. Hey, watch this. In him, there is no sin, and he did no sin. He became sin, but he never did sin. Say amen. In the meal offer, we have Christ, the perfect son. Then you move on, chapter number three, Brother Kyle to the peace offering, and Christ is our perfect serenity. Thank God he's our perfect serenity. I'm glad I have peace with God, amen? You go to chapter four, and you find the sin offering, and Christ is the perfect sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice. You move to chapter five, Brother Perry, and Christ is the trespass offering, and he's the perfect perfect solution, the perfect solution for forgiveness and guilt and injury towards others. You say, why did God have to have five offerings? Why couldn't it just be the burnt offering? Why couldn't it just be the meal offering or the trespass offering or the sin offering or the peace offering? I'll tell you why. Because in all five of those offerings, a different aspect, a different angle of the redemptive process of the sacrifice on Calvary is exemplified, is taught, and is showed. Somebody said, well, I like reading the New Testament, but I don't like to read the book of Leviticus. Well, you don't know what you're missing, friend, because in the book of Leviticus, Tom Hayes said, it's brethren, we have met to worship, and you can't worship without a sacrifice. Somebody help me, amen. I said you can't worship without a sacrifice and you can't have a sacrifice without the shedding of blood. And so you see the shedding of blood in the burnt offering. You see the shedding of blood in the sin offering. You see the shedding of blood in the trespass offering. And you see the shedding of blood, I think, in the yes, in the peace offering. But you don't see the shedding of blood in the meal offering because the meal offering represents his perfect humanity. Amen. 
and on and on and on we could go about the offerings and I, I've got a lot of information up here. I hope you're willing to listen, all right? When you look at the burnt offering of Leviticus chapter 1, you see, ladies and gentlemen, that it's called a burnt offering because it was to burn all night and it was to burn all of it. All of it was to be consumed. Did you know, Brother Mayo, in some of these offerings, the priests were allotted a portion. The priests were allotted part of the of the sacrifice, and they partook and had a meal off that offering, but not the burnt offering. Listen to me. Not the burnt offering. You know why? Because God said, I want all of it consumed. I want all of it consumed. I want all of it burned. That's why it's called a burnt offering, because it burned all the night. You say, what does that represent? That represents the agony. That represents the hurt. That represents the pain. That represents the completeness of the brutality on the cross of Calvary. I want you to know this morning, I want to do my best to tell you, at the cost of our redemption, the price of our salvation, I said the price of our salvation, it was not cheap, amen. It was not cheap at all. The burnt offering, the burnt offering of Leviticus chapter one is the first of the five Levitical offerings. I already told you, it was called number one, a burnt offering. Number two, it was called a sweet savor offering. But watch this, it was called a free will offering. Look in verse three, look in verse three. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice to the herd, let him offer a male without blemish, and that's a type of Christ. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door. The Hebrew, Brother Perry, had to bring it. No, look at me. Nobody was twisting his arm, Brother Brian. There was no compulsion. There was no constraint, no restraint. They did it of their own voluntary will. And I want you to know how much you are loved. I want you to know how much God so loved the world. I said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The burnt sacrifice says there was no compulsion and no restraint, but it was voluntary. It was of their own free will. Aren't you glad to know this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning of July 9th of the year 2017? Aren't you glad to know and don't you appreciate that thank God no man took his life from it. I said no man took his life from it but he willingly, willingly, willingly laid down his life for you and I. If that's not love, then I don't know what love is. I said, if that's not love, Brother Jonathan, and I don't know what love is, I to leave the splendor of heaven, I to leave the glory of eternity, I to leave the fellowship of the Father, and come down here under this sin benighted and sin cursed world, and live amongst humanity, and willingly lay down his life, and go through a real Roman crucifixion to obtain eternal redemption for you and I. I want you to leave today knowing that thank God Christ loved you so much. I said he loved you so much and he became the offering. He became the sacrifice and he was the sweet smelling savior. Amen. Stay with me, okay? I'm not finished. I'm not near finished. When you look at the burnt offering, when you look at the burnt offering and the vertical offerings, you see the work of the sun. And see, here's, here's what I, here's what I, I just got to pause a minute. Right. Brother Robbie, in all five of these offerings, the Hebrew individual brought the offering, the beast, from the field. You got that little red outline, right? Beast from the field, beast from the flock, and the beast from the fowl. They brought that offering to the priest. Listen to me, okay? Jared, they brought that offering to the, to the tabernacle, to the temple, to, to, to be slain. But don't miss what I'm trying to tell you. Don't miss this. In the burnt offering, when you look at all of it, Christ, he wasn't bringing anything. He was the offering. He was the offering. He was the sacrifice. He didn't have nothing in his hands, Miss Bonnie Roberts. He gave himself 
For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so the burnt sacrifice of Leviticus chapter 1, it pictures the work of the Son towards the Father. Watch this, watch this. It pictures the work, Brother Holden, of the Son toward the Father before the work of the Savior towards mankind. He was pleasing the Father. He was honoring the Father. It is the complete consecration of the whole being of the Son of God to the will, the mind, and the purposes of God in complete and entire sacrifice. And that in turn, Miss Dovey, brought satisfaction to the heart of God. I can say a word in verse 3. I know you're waiting for an outline. I don't always have one, but it's all right to have one. I have no problem with anybody having one. I've got a lot of outlines myself, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not always interested in the outline. I'd rather have the inline. Amen? But I tell you this, if I could preach all day about the presentation in verse 3, verse 3 they presented it. I could preach in verse 4, Miss Rhonda, about the laying on of hand. Why did the, why did the priest lay on the head of the, of the verse 4 of the sacrifice? It's called identification. I said it's called identification. I'm glad March the 30th of 19, I just ran, amen, of 1976 at 10.30 p.m. I put my hand on the offering. I identified with that offering. I identified with that sacrifice. Hey, hey, hey. I accepted. I accepted that sacrifice. That's in verse 4. I could preach all day about, about the laying on of hands, about the presentation. I could preach about verse 5, about the killing. Look in verse number 5, everybody. He shall kill the bullock before the Lord. Underline the word kill. I'll come back to that. I love verse 5, Dr. Maccabee. I could preach about the sprinkling of blood. He sprinkled the blood, verse 5, upon the altar. And that is by the door of the tabernacle congregation. Listen, church, I hope you believe this. I hope you believe today that Jesus' blood on the cross of Calvary, it was not spilled, say amen. No, it was not spilled because that might have been an accident. If I spill this up here, that could be an accident. Brother Derek, but here's what not spilled. It was shed. I believe it was preserved. I believe every drop was preserved. I believe before the righteous throne of God on high, the Son of God ascended. He told Mary, touch me not. I'm not yet ascended to my Father and to your Father. In other words, don't touch me now, but I'll be back. Where in the world was he going? What was he going to do? I'll tell you what, where he was going, and I'll tell you what he was going to do. I believe he took that blood as our high priest. Somebody help me, amen. I believe he took that blood, Brother Roger, and he went before the mercy seat on high, the tabernacle on high, and he sprinkled that blood. And the Father said, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Propitiation, I'm satisfied with the righteous demands of the law. The Bible said, He that sinneth shall die, and you paid the price of to redeem mankind. And the only thing that could redeem, that could, that could satisfy the righteous demands of a holy God was the blood of the sacrifice. Thank God I could preach all day. Verse 5 about the sprinkling of blood. Verse 6 through 9. I, in verse Leviticus 1, I could talk to you about the about the burning of the of the, of the, of the, the burning of the sacrifice. I'll come back to that. I could preach about in verses 1 to chapter 1 through 7 about the meal, the sacrificial meal that they partook of after they offered the sacrifice. But there's one thing I'd like to show you that the Holy Spirit showed me, and I mean this, and I hope it'll be a blessing to you. I want you to take your pen. If you have a pen or a pencil, I want you to do me a favor and get one out right now, okay? Right now, I'm going to preach. I'm not going to teach. I'm going to preach. Get you a pen. I'm going to show you something, okay? I'm going to talk to you about this sacrifice. Talk to you about this price that was paid. And by the way, you're not junk. You know that, didn't you? You're not junk. It cost God. It cost God his dear son. Save you out of hell. We're not junk. We might, to the world, we might be a throwaway, Brother Rick. But we're not throwaways. God paid the ultimate price. He paid the ultimate price to save you and I. I want you to look at the terminology. 
I want the terminology to grip your heart. I want you to start with me in verse number five. We're talking about the sacrifice. We're talking about him being an offering. Look in verse number five, all right? Underline the word this. He shall kill the bullock. Kill the bullock. Look in verse number six. He shall flay. Underline the word flay or circle it. That word means to skin. They cut the skin off. Interesting, Dr. Maccabee. Look this way, everybody. Interesting. In another chapter, I believe it's chapter 7, the skin was the only portion of the burnt offering that was reserved for the high priest, for the priest, Aaron and his son. I'll get to that later. I could preach that for another year, but uh, another time, but it's too much to handle right now. The only thing that was salvaged of the burnt offering was the skin, and that was given to the priest, Aaron and his son. But verse 6, not only verse 5 did you kill the bullock, but then number 2, I want you to flay or to skin, skin the burnt offering. Look in verse 6. He shall flay the burnt offering. Watch it. And cut it into, I love this. It didn't say her, his pieces. Amen. Yeah. Shall cut it. So here's the terminology. I want you to kill the bullet. I want you to flay the bullet. I want you to cut it into his pieces. Look in verse number 8. The priest Aaron's son shall lay the parts. Here they are separated. The head and the fat in order upon the wood. Look at verse 9. His inwards and his legs shall he wash in water, and the priest shall burn, underline the word, circle the word burn, on, on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice. Look, if you will, in verse number 15. Drop down to verse 15. And the priest shall bring into the altar. This is a turtle or young pigeon. I want you to wring off his head. Ring off his head. A circle the word, ring off his head. And then burn it on the altar and shall be wrung out. Verse number uh, verse number 17. Yeah, verse 17. He shall cleave it with the wings are up. That means separate and divide it. He shall not divide it asunder. Don't, don't cut it all the way. And then verse 17. Burn it upon the altar. All right? If you did what I asked you to do, you should have these words on the line in your Bible or circle, or highlight it. The word kill in verse five. The word flay in verse six. The word cut it in pieces, verse six. Lay the parts, verse eight. Burn it all, verse nine. Ring off his head. That sounds so violent. Ring off his head, verse 15. Verse, I, I miss verse 16. Pluck away the crop and the feathers. Verse 16, pluck away. This is the fowl. Verse 17, cleave it and burn it. Now, everybody look this way, okay? Let me say, tell you what all that is. Let me tell you what all that represents. That represents the severance of every joint, the severance of every joint, the dislocation of every limb, the dislocation of every limb, the tearing asunder of every member. Did you get what I just said? That represents the severance of every joint, the dislocation of every limb, Brother Ronnie, and the tearing asunder of every member of the body. I'm talking about if it was a uh, uh, the cattle, if it was a sheep or a goat, that's in the middle of the chapter. In other words, if the sacrifice came from the field, do all this to it. If it came from the flock, do all this to it. If it came from the fowls, do all this to it. I want you to cut it. I want you to kill it. I want you to skin it. I want you to lay the parts out. And then I want you to burn it. I want you to burn it on the altar. I want you to wring off its head. I want you to pluck, pluck away its crop and its feathers. I want you to cleave it, and I want you to burn it. You say, preacher, why did you bring all of that out? Why such violence? Why such awful violence on someone so pure and someone so lovely and someone so tender as a turtle dove or a young pigeon or even a lamb or a baby goat or a bullock or an oxen. Why the violence on somebody so pure, so un, un, unresisted, so lovely and so tender? Why the severance of every joy? Why the dislocation of every limb? And why the tearing asunder of every member? Why, preacher? Why? I tell you why. I tell you why, church. I tell Mountain View why. Here's why. Because none of us can ever really deeply, completely, completely understand how deeply, how deeply he was wounded for our transgressions. 
how deeply he was wounded for our transgressions. I looked it up, I listened to it, I played it on my phone, I popped it, popped it in YouTube. I said, I want the words to this. This is the words of the 90 and 9. Dr. McAbee hears some of those words. None of the ransomed ever knew how dark was the night, nor how deep was the water's cross that the Lord passed through ere he found his sheep that was lost. I'm afraid we've strayed from Calvary. I'm afraid we've just about forget, forgotten we've been purged. That's in 1 Peter, all right, or 2 Peter. I'm afraid we're not living near the cross. I'm afraid the shadow of the cross isn't having a lot of bearing on our life anymore. Did you understand what I said? The severance of every joint, the dislocation of every limb, the tearing asunder of every member. Yes, there was a crown of thorns. Yes, there was the buffeting on his head. Yes, there was the spear in his side. Yes, there were the nails in his hand. Yes, there was the spitting and the buffeting and the cat of nine tail and it lacerated his back and as he hung there without any clothes on, Somebody said, why was there a total eclipse? And why did God let darkness come upon the earth? i tell you why. To clothe his only begotten son in the darkness uh, to, to, to maybe uh, seal some of that humiliation and pay. I call it the contradiction of sinners against himself. I'm telling you, friend, I don't know if we can appreciate. I don't know if we've ever understood. I don't know if it ever has dawned on us. Us, how deeply I said how deeply he was wounded for our transgression I got news for you sister I got news for you sir your sins put him on that cross my sins put him on that cross you're not such a goody two shoe you've not been such an absolute perfection all of your life that you don't have sin you was born with sin I was born with sin and he became sin and he did that for me and he did that for you it was your sin it was my sin it was Charles Manson's sin it was Hitler's sin it was Mussolini's sin it was the Muslim sin it was the murderer's sin and the rapist's sin and the child molester's sin and the thief's sin and the dishonest person's sin and he took all that on himself I said he took all that on himself and he will Willingly, he willingly became the offering. He willingly became the sacrifice. And he willingly was a sweet savor to God. I'm telling you today, it's high time that some of us are once again ponder and meditate on how deeply he was wounded for our transgressions. I'm not finished. Don't, don't, don't shut me down, okay? Don't. My voice might be, but I'm not finished. Watch this. Watch this. It's interesting. Oh, David, I didn't write it. I'm just preaching it. Look in verse 8. I oh, thank you. When I said that, every head went down. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Look at verse 8. I want to show you something. Verse 8. And the priest Aaron's son shall lay the parts. The head, now I don't understand all this, Brother Barry. The head and the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. Now stay with me, I'll come and show you something very, very interesting. The head of the animal. And then, Brother Pearson, the fat. Now, am I correct? Stay with me. Don't, don't get distracted. Nobody get distracted. This is the me. This is this is it right here. This is it right here. The head, the outer man. The fat, brother Jonathan, the inner man. Stay with me, okay? Am I right on that? The head representing the outer man. But watch this, brother Trey. The fat on the inside, brother Kevin. That's the inner man. Look at verse 9. I'll show you this. Look at verse 9. It's interesting. But his inwards, you know what that means, the entrails. His inwards and his legs 
Why does God, Brother Holden, put those two together? An inner and an outer. He did the same thing in verse 8. An outer and an inner part. Outer the head, inner the fat, the inner. He turns around in verse 9, Brother Ben. He does the same thing. He said, take his inwards and his legs. Inwards, the entrails on the inside. The, the legs, the outside. I want those washed in water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Now, it's very interesting to me, Brother Mark Jordan, that God would couple an outer part with something inner. And Miss Sherry Mayo, he didn't do it once, he said it twice. And, and I want to give you this, because I'll forget it. Um, I, I read this, and it blessed my heart. And, and this, is, this, is, this is, keep what you got, but this is, this is a sub-point to a sub-point to a sub-point. The head, who knew no sin. The legs, who did no sin. The inwards, in him is no sin. Now that'll preach at a white church, black church, green church, yellow church, Mexican church, that'll preach, amen. The head who knew no sin. The legs who did no sin. The inwards in him is no sin. That's a whole other message. But why would God, Josh, take the head and, and the fat, put them on the, let's just say a grate. Put them on the grate. Put them on the wood on the altar. Let them burn. Turn around, Brother Brian. Say, I want the inwards, the entrails, Probably could have been some of the inner inner organs too, maybe the liver, some of these other, oh, it gets so intricate. It really does. Take the inwards, but I want you to grab another outward thing, the legs of the animal. I want you to lay them on the, the grate, lay them on the, on the wood, the fire. I want you to burn them together. Burn them together. Stay there with me. Burn them together. Don't burn. I'm almost finished. Don't burn the legs and the head together. That's two outer parts. I want the head and the fat, I want it burned. And, I, and by the way, this was not left to man's imagination. Whatever God said, that's how they had to do it. Brother Mark, take, take the head, let me get it right, take the head and the fat, Mr. Ram, burn that. But then I want you to get the entral, the inner, innards. Is it called in, 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 inwards? The, in, in, verse 9, that 9? The inwards and the legs, another piece of outward. You burn them together. So I don't know where you're going with this. I know some of you don't. Some of you do. Where are you going with this? What, what are you trying to say? My question to you, this audience, and up here too, do you think he only suffered outwardly? Is that what you think? Do you think that's all there was to the cross? Folks, do you think that's all there was to Calvary and there was plenty of suffering? Do you think, Brother Bennett, and I know you don't, but just use your name, do you think all it was was a crown of thorns? Church, stay with me. Can, can, you, give me, can you give me five minutes? Give me a little bit more right here, Philip. A little bit more. I, I'm, I'm struggling, okay? Not, not your fault, my fault. Uh, do you think it was just a crown of thorns, Nathan, Miss Ashley? Do you think it was just a spear in his side? Do you think it was them Roman nails? Do you think it was the embarrassment of no clothes? He didn't have a loincloth on. Say amen. They gamble for his room. You think that's all it was? You think it was spittle and buffeting and that's all there was to the cross? Is that what you think? You think that's the only suffering there was? You think that's the only price? If that was the only price, Miss Willis, if that was the only price, others have paid that price. There were two, hey, look at me, church. There were two thieves. There were two thieves that were crucified with him. Two thieves crucified with him. That, but there was, that, that's not the depth of the cross. That's not, the, that's not the depth of him being wounded. That's not the intensity of his sufferings. That's not the full story. That's not the complete picture. That's not all there is to it. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a book by its cover. There's more to the story than what meets the eye. I said there's more to the story than what meets the eye. God said, I want the head and the fat burn, and I want, I want the, the inwards and the legs burn but I want it done together. I want the suffering and the flame and the fire and the burning to happen at the same time to both parts. Take your Bible and I'm finished. I'm finished. Take your Bible. Take your Bible. Go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. I don't, I don't, I don't have the ability to preach this. I don't. I'm, I'm still telling you I don't. I prayed. I said, God, I don't even know what to say. I, 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 don't, I, I, can't, I can't all identify yet but I think I need to preach it. 
Isaiah 53. All right, if you're there, would you say amen, everybody? Amen. I'm going to show you something that very few people ever, 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 ever contemplate. Isaiah 53, verse 10. Yeah. All right, ready? Okay, verse 10, I'm finished. There's two verses, I'm finished. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. We, we know what that means. He had put him to grief. Watch this. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. I tell you now, I tell you. I tell you what I will tell you. Oh, man, I tell you. I just ran again. I just got back. He loved our soul so much, he's willing to give his soul. Somebody say amen. What? The terminology is right in front of you. He'll make his soul, the inner man, the inner man, an offering for sin. Have you ever contemplated that? None of the ransomed ever knew. None of us ever knew how dark was the night, nor how deep were the waters crossed that the Lord passed through this curtain ere he found his lost sheep that was lost. Thank God I'm glad he found it. I have never fully contemplated. I have never fully understood. I have never fully understood how deep and how dark were the waters that he crossed to redeem my soul. And by the way, shouldn't that make me love him? Shouldn't that make me live for him? Shouldn't that make me want to give my all? Hey, friend, hey, friend, it's more than just a song. It's more than just a song. But the truth is, Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. I want the head and the fat, the outside and the inside. Burn it, burn it. I want the inwards and the legs. Burn it. I want outside and inside at the same time to taste the fires of the wrath of God. Look at verse 11. Verse 11. He shall see, verse 11, of the travail of his what? Somebody say it. Of his soul. Travail. I'm trying to finish, man. Y'all remember when we went to the Garden of Gethsemane? What he said? Remember when he came back and said to Peter, James, and John? Take your rest. My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Not his body, his soul. That's in Matthew 26. That's in Mark 14. That's in Luke 2, I believe. My soul. I'm not finished. He shall see the travail of his soul. He shall be satisfied. There's that, there's that sweet savor right there. And it's preaching time for him. There's that sweet savor. By my is not some right and just he shall be bare there in verse 12, I'm finished. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the grave. He shall divide the spoil with the strong because why? He hath poured out his soul unto death. Three times, Brother Galloway, three times. He made his soul an offering. See the travail of his soul. And he poured out his soul. I say one more time, maybe the fourth time I've said it, maybe the third. None of us ransomed ever knew how dark was the night and how deep were the waters crossed that the Lord went through ere he found his sheep that was lost. Thank God for Calvary. Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. Sin hath left the crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Hallelujah. Does it not demand my all? Does it not demand my love? Can I not give him some time? Can I not give my talents? Can I not give him my life? 
Can I not bow at his feet and crown him King of kings and Lord of lords? suffered on the outside but he suffered on the inside take the sin of the whole world you take the sin of the whole world put it not necessarily on his body but on his soul what a crushing blow that must have been what torment and by the way it's no wonder brother Williamson he hung there in the darkness. My God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken? I can answer that. I said, I can answer that. Why did he forsake him? For being here. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down. You know what we are? Trophies of his grace. Throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, he's going to put you and I on display. So this is why I became an offering. Oh God. This is why I became the sacrifice. And this is what became the sweet smelling sin. Let's, uh, let's sing. Let's, do you have Jesus paid it all? Let's sing that. Let's, come on, Tiffy. Let's, let's grab your book, everybody. We'll find the words in a minute. Grab your book. We don't normally stay this long, but I like it. I'm not apologizing for it. I like it. What number is that? Get your, get your 210. Get your 210. Let's sing, let's sing two verses and we'll go home. Sing two verses. Ready? Let's go. Stand up. Two verses, 210. Right, let's go, Brother Carl. Go ahead, Tiffy. 210. 210. Sing it with your heart. Sing it with your heart. Think about what I just preached. Sing it. Come on. Come on. In the balcony. In the balcony. Come on. Thy strength in me is Child of Queen is wanted. Find in me. somebody. I'm going to blame it on medicine. Thank you for your patience. Shake hands with half a dozen. See you tonight. God bless you. I like keep playing that.